Hello and welcome to Metro Arts. I am your host, Larry Wallace. Here on Metro Arts, we highlight some of the best in the business. From fine artists, photographers, and performing artists, to cinematographers and musical artists, all from the Metro Detroit area. On today's show, we'll explore the funny side of art with comedian Devante Ebo. The bluegrass metal band, The Native Howl, will fire up our studio. But our first guest is an award-winning panel who shares his artistic talents as a teacher. Let's meet Sengor Reed. There are these insecurities that I deal with as an artist, and I feel like I always want to master the next thing. The best subject to pull from is nature. I've had so many amazing teachers throughout my life. So I feel like the only way that I can give back to my teachers is by teaching the next generation. As a teacher, you realize students really don't remember what you tell them, <laughs> but they remember how they felt when they were in your classroom. And that's what really carries throughout their lives, you know, once they leave you. Being an art teacher feeds my painting practice. What I teach in the classroom, I'm able to apply directly to my studio practice. Like a musician is always working on the scales, you know, they're always working on their chops. And so for me, I'm always trying to challenge myself by painting new things. I painted clouds because I had never painted clouds before. Let's say I want to paint a man standing on the street corner. I can handle painting the figure, I can handle painting his clothes, because I learned how to paint those things in school, right? I never had a chance to, you know, try to figure out how to create a sense of fluffiness and a sense of space and air. And so when I first tried to do it, my clouds looked like rocks. <laughs> and they look like rocks floating in the sky. I, you know, I painted a gazillion paintings of clouds and they were all failures. And so finally one day I struck gold and I was like, wow, those actually look like real fluffy clouds. Now I can move over and I can paint this big painting of this man standing on the street corner. I share a studio space with my mom and we're able to paint together, share ideas. I especially love when she critiques my work. You want feedback and you want to collect all of the feedback. Good, bad, critical, overly critical, off base, because when you put that painting out into the world, you aren't going to be able to have conversations with people centered around that work. It's got to hold up to being analyzed and interpreted. You want that to begin to happen in the studio. There's so many galleries that have come and gone. You know, there's so many galleries that have been hot and been all the rage and all the news and are selling artwork left and right. And the next thing you know, the gallery's gone. That hot artist is nowhere to be found. And then you look across the street and the artist market is still there, standing strong, still supporting artists. And I don't think that that should ever change. Art is the only real thing that really makes me happy. Hello, Sengor, and welcome to Metro Arts and Wayne State. Thank you. I'm glad thank, to be here. Thank you for being here. So you come from an art artistic family. Did you always know you wanted to be a painter? I didn't necessarily know that I wanted to be a painter, but I definitely knew that I wanted to be an artist. Since early on, I was always drawing every day, mm -hmm. writing in my, drawing in my sketchbook, doing collages, paintings, mm -hmm. and uh, just being in an artistic household. Yeah. It was just always embedded in me, and so it's just something that just always came naturally. Yeah. Now, you mentioned your students. Can you tell us where does your inspiration come from? I'm inspired by so many different things. It's mm -hmm. really hard to pinpoint just one. I'm inspired by my family. I'm inspired by Detroit, artists in Detroit. Um, just growing up, I was always going to museums, going to galleries, 
And so I was always looking at what other artists in the city were doing. Mm -hmm. And I just always said, you know, when I grow up, that's what I want to do. You know, I want to be creative. I want to make things that inspire people. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Now, you've actually won quite a few awards. You've even been honored as the Kresge Art Fellow. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to have your art recognized on these different levels? Wow. Um, just to be recognized as an artist is truly humbling, and I'm really honored. And, you know, I, it really kind of uh, kind of pushes you as an artist. It, mm -hmm. it, it really, you know, when you're recognized, it, it really makes you want to make more art. It makes you want to get better. Mm -hmm. So many artists so often sometimes feel like they're left out of, of discussions, like they're, they're mm -hmm. left out of when they're discussions about culture. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to be recognized, it's like it, it sort of affirms mm -hmm. that, you know, you are of value and that what you're doing as an artist has value. Right, for sure. Mm -hmm. So you brought some of your paintings today. Yes. Can you tell us about each one? Well, these paintings are a little bit different. These are uh, paintings that are part of my studio practice. Sometimes I do have you know, artist block, if you will. Yeah. And so, but I want to keep the juices flowing. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm not working on like a larger piece, I like to just do something that I don't have to think too hard about, uh, but that will still, uh, you know, continue to push my right. technique and, and, and my skill set. Mm -hmm. And so I just will pick up something very simple, like yeah. some apples, some oranges, uh, some small objects. Mm -hmm. And I, I try to do these very quickly. Uh, and, and sometimes they serve as sort of a warm up for larger works. Yeah. Uh, but oftentimes it's just, like I said, it's like, you know, like, like a musician practices the scales. You yeah. Know? I mean, these, these are the scales for me. For sure. Yeah. Now, what message can you give other aspiring artists? Just to keep making art, you mm -hmm. know, just to continue to find avenues to express yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have so much to say inside of ourselves and so mm -hmm. much to share with others. Um, and so we got to let it out. You know, mm -hmm. you can't you, you can't just make art in the basement and like sure. never share it with yeah. the world. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I mean, my, that's my always my biggest advice. And and also to work on the business of your art. Right. So, so, so often as artists, we're only focused on the expression, mm -hmm. expression part, and sometimes we don't think about the business of, of our sure. art and, and putting it out into the world yeah. and selling it and, and really making it a viable piece of, of, of what you do professionally. For sure. Mm -hmm. And where could people find out more information about your artwork? Oh, you can go to my website, singlereed.com. On the site, you can find paintings, drawings, uh, all the work that I do, and also stay updated uh, mm -hmm. in terms of where I'm showing or, or projects that I'm working on. For sure. I also use a few social media platforms, yeah. so just at Singular Read on Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook, and Twitter. Okay, well, Singular, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you so much. This has truly been, been an honor. Thank you. Yeah. You're watching Metro Arts on Detroit Public Television. <laughs> Our next guest is Devante Evo, also known as Devo the Comedian. Welcome to Metro Arts. How are you doing? So can you tell us how you first became a stand-up comedian? Well, it actually all started in high school. Uh, actually, I actually had a huge fear of talking in front of people, but I was always goofy as a child. Mm -hmm. So uh, my senior year, I was put in a drama, debate, and speech. So all those classes kind of helped me get over that fear, and I started going to open mics, and I traveled to Los Angeles for a little bit, and I was at the Laugh Factory and stuff, and I just fell in love with telling stand-up, and I've been doing it for two and a half years now. Okay, and what is the number one thing you like about being a stand-up comedian? Uh, the craziest thing about it is probably when I walk into a room, and most of the time people don't know who I am because I haven't been doing it that long. So when you can make a whole group of 150, 250, laugh for 10, 15, 25 minutes is probably the best feeling in the whole world. I, nothing better. That's the best high in the whole world. Okay. And you have both stand-up routines and skits. Tell us about the creative process that you go through when creating skits. Honestly, a lot of time I'll, I'll be sitting in the barber shop and I see all this crazy stuff that's been happening on TV and I, I like to use the current events and daily struggles that I deal with with being half black and half white. Uh -huh. Just kind of give my perspective on how I look at life. Mm -hmm. And what kind of advice would you give to any aspiring comedian? Uh, never give up on it, because I've bombed 
10, 15, 20 times, and I still get up there all the time. It's just repetitive. All you got to do is keep writing, constantly keep getting up there, and it's like a network. That's probably the most important thing is to getting to know people. It's like the more people you know, the more opportunities you get to get on stage. For sure. And can you tell us about the routine that we're going to see next? Um, in all honesty, I've been doing a lot of crazy stuff. I went to New Orleans, and I did a lot of stuff I probably shouldn't talk about, so I'm not <laughs> going to talk about it. <laughs> And so that'll probably be in my next routine, which will probably be on my website for people to check out. Okay, and talking about your website, what could people find out more information about your career and more information about you? Yeah, on my website, DevonteEbo.com, has all my social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whenever I post a skit, it's usually updated within a week, and I just put all that stuff on there, my tour dates and where I'm gonna perform next, it's usually updated within like three or four days of where I'll be there. Okay, cool. Well, Devontae, I want to thank you so much for being here today. It was a pleasure interviewing you, and I can't wait to see your performance. Thank you. Yep. Up next, Devontae performs in our studio. You're watching Metro Arts, produced at the Midtown Studio at Wayne State University. Hey, guys. Uh, first and foremost, I would just like to address that Devontae Ebo is way too black of a name for a light-skinned dude, right? All I'm saying is, as soon as my parents named me Devontae, I lost 100 points off my credit score like that. <laughs> and that's the crazy thing. I know I don't look like a Devontae. Like, Devontae sound like he's 6'3", got dreadlocks and a lazy eye. <laughs> and I just kind of look Puerto Rican. That's the only thing I got going for me. And I, it, was, it was difficult getting a job, y'all. Like, they wouldn't even let me work over the phones. I'd be calling white people all day just, hi, this Devontae. Can I speak to the head of the house? <laughs> They'd be like, Devontae? Am I getting robbed over the phone? I didn't even know this was possible. But yeah, uh, I don't know if y'all have ever seen this, but uh, you ever seen the preferred nickname box on an application? Man, I thought Devontae was bad, but my nickname ain't much better. The kids used to call me Debo. I can't put Debo on my Burger King application. <laughs> He's like, my boss come up to me. He's like, Debo. We just grossed $3,000 in sales today. I was like, no, nah, fool. I just grossed $3,000 in sales today. That's my money, punk. <laughs> and so uh, a lot of times growing up, man, I had trouble fitting in. Because uh, being half black and half white, I was always trying to impress black people and white people. Y'all know how stupid I look walking into second grade with a Jordan on my left foot and a light-up sketch on my right foot? <laughs> Ms. Johnson tried to put me in special ed. I said, I'm racially challenged, not mentally challenged, Ms. Johnson. So I don't know what I want to be. I might be Mexican. <laughs> and speaking of Mexicans, uh, I'm a little scared about this whole Donald Trump thing, because I work in construction, and I don't want to accidentally get deported. <laughs> so I told my mom to go inside the house and get me a green card out the Uno game, because I didn't know if these fools was playing around or not. <laughs> So I told her to grab a draw for it, too. I threw that out like a race card. I said, yellow, go get the Asians. I was like, they know karate. It's like, and if we run out of ammo, I can tell you one thing. We cannot fight a billion Bruce Lees. <laughs> and so uh, growing up when I was younger, Cat Williams influenced a lot of my comedy. So uh, I'm going to do an impression real quick. I want you to let me know what y'all think. <clears throat> Good evening, Pimpin'. This is Cat Williams coming at you from Detroit. And Detroit is one of the most beautiful, most gangster, most terrifying places in all of America. It's the type of place you can go to Greek Town and win $2,000, or you can walk out and get stabbed at a stop sign. You just, you never know, boo boo. You never know. And uh, I'm the oldest of three, and I swear I thought my younger twin brothers were geniuses, man, because they came up running to me and they were like, Debo, we just made a dipping sauce. I'm like, are you telling me two little five-year-old half-black boys made a dipping sauce? It's like, I'm 11. I haven't invented anything. So y'all gonna make me look bad. He's like, you want to try it? I'm like, of course. I grab a chicken nugget, I dunk it. I'm like, this tastes kind of weird, Donovan Donnell. What y'all put in the dipping sauce? He was like, well, we started with some mustard. I'm like, all right. And then we put some barbecue sauce. I'm like, cool. Said, and then we finished it with some Dawn. I was like, Pfft. I said, like, you put dish soap in the dipping sauce down now? My brother just gonna look at me and go, it's bubbly, ain't it? <laughs> All right, y'all, my name's Devontae Ebo. It's been a pleasure.
Our next guest on Metro Arts is the Native Howl. This band has a rustic, clean sound that blends bluegrass, rock, and alternative genres. Here's Thunderhead. <laughs> Cause these horsemen ride with the pistol on each side With heads like thunder they rob you of your pride They'll have no mercy for people far and wide We horsemen ride with a pistol on each side With heads like thunder we'll rob you of your pride We'll have no mercy for people far and wide Hey guys, and welcome to Metro Arts. Thanks for having us. You want to start by introducing yourselves and members of your band? Sure. I'm Jake Sawicki. I play banjo and guitar for the Native Howl. Mm -hmm. I'm Alex Holy Cross. I play guitar, bazooki, and I sing for the Native Howl. Hey, I'm Mark Chandler. I play bass and also sing in the Native Howl. 
I, and I am Joshua Lemieux, and I play drums and sing for the Native Hall. Okay, well, thank you all for being here. Um, so Thunderhead was kind of like the song that put you guys on the map. Yeah. How did you guys go about creating it? Well, I wrote the song Thunderhead at a uh, folk and bluegrass festival called Wheatland in northern Michigan. Mm -hmm. I uh, saw Don Julin and Billy Strings performing on the second stage. They closed the night out on Saturday night three years ago. And uh, their performance was so good and so moving, it inspired me to go back to my tent at 3 in the morning and grab a guitar and tune it in open D and write Thunderhead. I wanted to write something as fast and aggressive as they were playing that night. And then I brought it to my bandmates. Jake learned the banjo, mm -hmm. and we put the song together. And mm -hmm. There it is. Okay. Now, you and Jake started the band in 2013. It was just you two. And then eventually you grew into a four-man band. Yeah. How did that go? About? Well, I've been uh, playing music with my longtime friend and drummer, Josh, mm -hmm. for ten, over 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And Josh and I have known Mark Chandler, who was actually a guitarist in metal bands when we were in high school. His band played with our bands all over, you know, Metro Detroit. And we knew Jake through his cousin, who was our old guitarist. So we all kind of knew each other. And just over the years, sort of weeded out the musicians that we were all playing with and came together and realized this was the MVP team I was always okay. looking for. The dream you know, team. Yeah, the dream yeah. team. Okay, now what is Thrashgrass? Well, Thrashgrass is the combination of bluegrass and thrash metal. It takes, um, the uh, heavy kick snare patterns of thrash metal and uh, incorporates it with uh, fast double time bluegrass, basically. And it's also the name of our latest EP. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. And where could viewers find out more information about your band? Well, you can go to thenativehowl.com. You can go to the Native Howl's Facebook page, Native Howl, at the Native Howl Twitter, at the Native Howl Instagram. We're on Reverb Nation, we're on iTunes, we're on Apple Music, we're on Amazon. Am I missing anything? Yeah. yeah. Everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. we're in a, a lot just, of platforms. Just Google the Native Hall, you'll find okay. it. Okay. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for being here. It was a pleasure interviewing you guys. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank yeah. you. Thanks for having us. Here again is the Native Hall. You're watching Metro Arts on Detroit Public Television. Set my 
my back in the devil by my side Into the darkness we ride We hope you enjoyed today's show. I would like to thank our guests, Sengor Ree, Devante Evo, and the Native Howl for being here today. Remember, you can watch any of our shows online at MetroArtsDetroit.com and find us on social media. I'm your host on Metro Arts, Larry Wilds, reminding you to always support the arts and cultivate the talent in your community. Thank you.